All right, we are ready to go. Um, this is the September 18th, 2024 Kingston Police Commission meeting, uh, calling this meeting to order at 4.09 p.m. Uh, we do have a quorum. Thank you, commissioners, for joining us today. Um, we are going to get started. Uh, we've got a couple of agenda items today to get through. Um, we haven't met really since early summer, so uh, we've got a couple of things to uh, catch up on. Um, but first, what I'll ask for is uh, approval of the video minutes from our last meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Mace. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Bowden. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, minutes are done. I we don't have any public comments uh, that received that I'm aware of, and we also don't have any. Public, and so we're going to move on from that. Um, communications uh, from the chief um, and our secretary, Brad. Yeah, we, I have a couple of communications, actually, two very nice compliments. I'm assuming, chief, the, the one woman uh, in a pothole had a flat tire, and two of our officers helped her change the tire, and then on the very nearest hill, we get from my hotel, the nearest gas station, helped her. With air in the tire. And she wasn't sure, is it Stu? Because she, yeah, I, I figured that's what she did. She wasn't sure the seven, second officer was, but Stu. And then um, we had another similar incident. Uh, elderly woman uh, who returned to the bus stop, couldn't find her car. And officer Ken Palmer went the extra mile and, and uh, helped her locate her car. She went on how impressed she was. And, she had grown up in Queens, had a relationship with the police down there, and that, that she got to know them because they had a police athletic league in her neighborhood. And she said it's really nice that she couldn't believe, you know, the, the, the length that he went to help her. She was embarrassed, but because of her age, she understood. So it's nice to get those. Um, and then we have some complaints that we'll talk about and soon later. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually found one when you mentioned about it. Uh, this was sent by Chief Patricia Phil Patrician from the Elmville Police Department uh, for uh, Sergeant Mike Mills. Uh, he had reached out, it's quite lengthy and in detail, but essentially uh, Sergeant Mills assisted in an investigation uh, on our side of it, um, called down to headquarters, and uh, Mike Mills was able to give him a lot of information, even in the course of a couple of days, for a home invasion slash shooting that occurred. And he credits Mike Mills and the information he was able to dig up that really kind of helped them build state police in that direction. So we're going to just file. That's great. Thank you. Uh, so those are recommendations. Uh, Chief, you want to give us an update on you know what the department's been up to this summer? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, one of our officers, Connor Papin, is back from Broome County Academy. He's here for the six weeks of field training. He'll go back to graduation end of October and then he'll uh, he'll finish the required our required field training uh, remaining from that point on. But uh, I saw him again today and he's doing great, big smile on his face, happy to get the uniform on and be out there doing some work. So that's gonna be a friendly face out there. That was a little guy. No, this one's a big one. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah so the uh, other three, the little guy is uh, in the academy right now locally and they're going through some defensive tactics training and crossing each other around the house right now. So luckily everyone's doing well there. Um, the, uh, we are working with um, Kyle McIntosh from IT on uh, the expenditures for the tech grant, which uh, as we talked about before, include cameras, LPRs, um, records management system, and uh, basically new computers and mobile data terminals throughout the department. So it's a big, huge input of uh, technology. So um, as you notice, we've had the bike officers out there uh, as much as we can. They love the e-bikes. They think those uh, pedal assist bikes are the best, especially when they start from headquarters. Um, 
We are working with Oracle on the linear park and then out information um, on a regular basis. Uh, we have stepped up our traffic enforcement as a result of the Safe Start the School program. Uh, but overall, a lot of the uh, officers are, are really kind of finding that they're, they're using their time more wisely to be a little bit more proactive when it comes to that. We get quite a few complaints from I just one this morning, uh, speed um, in certain sections. So we're trying to do that as well. And we joked a little bit about it. I joked a little bit about it during the radio show this morning that as soon as the mayor gets done paving this beautiful stretch of roadway, everybody starts to speed up. <laughs> and, uh, we got to kind of file along the and uh, and do some speed enforcement. But uh, overall, the department's doing great. And um, the we moved our dispatch center to a more centralized location of the first part of the building. The downstairs just moved over one, and uh, the lieutenants are now occupying that part of the space. So it makes it a little bit easier. Super sergeants on one side, dispatch, and then lieutenants. So it's, we think it will streamline a lot of the, the communications aspects of it. So before it kind of was lieutenants, sergeants, and dispatch, now dispatch is surrounded on both sides. Of it. So we hope it will work. Yeah. Uh, are you lowering the speed limit? Oh, we did. So yes, uh, so the common council. Yeah, so the common council uh, passed it uh, last month. Um, generally, that gave us some time to put up some signs, and so uh, over the last two weeks and for the next two weeks, um, you'll be seeing more of the thirty mile per hour signs being swapped out for the twenty five mile per hour signs, and so this technically, you know, uh, in effect, but you know, we got to get all of the signs swapped over. So that should be done by the end of the month. Um, and, you know, then we're going to be doing some uh, education. Uh, my communications department right now is working on a mailer home to everyone um, to just remind them about the speed limit change. Some entire school? Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, um, every address. And so just to be able to give folks a sense of, you know, not only that, but some tips on, you know, following the rules of the road, you know, how pedestrians can be safe, cyclists and drivers. So we're going to use this up as an opportunity to just do some enhanced education. I mean, the police department, I have to say, you know, during the safe start to summer campaign that we did in July, um, you know, we gave out 153 tickets. Uh, and, you know, we've been over the last couple of weeks with the safe start to school, you know, we and other agencies have kind of partnered to do some more enforcement in and around school zones. Uh, and, you know, just trying to remind people to kind of take it slow. And I think as you guys have seen, as we you drive around the city, you know, we are also taking advantage of every opportunity when we do repave the streets uh, to be able to kind of repaint the streets in a way to kind of calm traffic. And so, you know, for we've done that on Broadway here to put a shoulder on the side of the road so that um, people just feel like the road is narrow so that they'll drive a little bit slower. and. It really works from Burger King on down. People used to fly down to Kingston Catholic around the curve. And now by putting shoulder lanes, white lanes on the side of the road and a center yellow line, it's really helps kind of slow people down. They now try to stay in the lane. In order to do that, you gotta go slower. And so that has, uh, those are the types of things that we're gonna be doing uh, as we kind of repave some of these major thoroughfares in the city. Uh, I will also just add that, you know, this summer has been, uh, and as we continue into the fall, we'll continue, we've had a ton of events. And so the mm -hmm. Kingston Police Department has been out and about, and they've really done a great job um, at all of these events. And, you know, help not only keeping people safe, but, you know, getting all the road detours. And a, a shout out to Lieutenant Negron, who's really been out there um, working really hard uh, to kind of not only help these festival organizers get their events going and plan and operating well on the day of the event, but, you know, being able to work with the neighbors and folks who are, um, you know, maybe uh, more, more tuned in that this event is happening. So it's been uh, very positive and we've had, uh, you know, really uh, a, a great summer. Uh, and I know it will be even busy here this fall with some of the events we have coming up with the Italian festival and positive and, Field and supply, and you know, this weekend's art walk, and next weekend is, um, you know, events here in this building. So we just have a lot going on. So uh, they've been doing a good job. And I would have to say those uh, those road barriers we were talking about yeah. this morning on our radio show, but they really come out really. They've worked really well um, to be able to make sure that we're protecting our pedestrians. We've been having a lot of pedestrian events out in the streets, and that's been helpful to keep people safe that way. And, 
you know, people don't even notice them that they're there. Um, and but yeah, they're they're there and are very helpful. So those are the only things I needed to add to your report. <laughs> so thank you. Anyone have any questions for the chief about anything that's does cruise work at 25? What's that? Cruise control work at 25. Uh, I think it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I don't think you yeah. should have it. E bikes in East for we're starting to see a lot of that. Yeah. What's the deal with them? Are they supposed to obey the same traffic laws as uh, different classes, right? The different, different classes of those type of vehicles. So. There's a lot of e-bikes, excuse me, commuting almost, and then they're just flying through the sun stop signs. And it's, it's yeah. Like it's yeah, we've got a couple of uh, tickets issued to them. Oh, so they do yeah, so yeah. side the law. Oh, yeah. 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 There are different, so like for instance, on our rail trails and on our, and our infrastructure, you know, there's a level one and level two, which basically are pedal assist. So you have to pedal to be able to make your bike have the battery boost to go. And they generally top out at like 20. 23, 22 miles per hour, and that's the most. But then there's another level three series where they actually kind of have like a throttle. That's um, and those generally, um, you know, uh, some of them are illegal. Some of them, um, you need, you're required to wear helmets. You're required to, you know, uh, do a whole bunch of things. And that is where we, I think we've been giving most of our tickets. So people are using those devices inappropriately um, and not legally yeah they make them they look like a bike you know, they're just throttled and then the other time for the ones you stand on they got to have the and yeah. those are pretty quick too though. they're really quick yeah, they're really, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah we're very fortunate the one thing we've noticed is we haven't had any real issues with there was a, a time period where atvs four wheelers motorcycles were on the street and that you know yeah, you don't that's see the and he doesn't get nervous that there's going to be an accident because yeah. these everybody blowing through stop signs and just sit there between people. And yeah, and they're, like I said, when we have the, the traffic enforcement out there, they're always watching for a anytime we can. So, they, in fact, they issued a ticket this morning for the uh, failure. Uh, they passed the school bus. Well, this is school bus. Uh, no, it was a car. Oh, but, a car? Uh, yeah, just the, the fact that they're on it and the officers are doing this. Uh, so, in terms of unfinished business, do you have anything, Chief? That uh, any new business other than our items for executive session today? No, sir. So today for executive session, we've got um, a couple of complaints and uh, to review. I think it's all complaints this time, right? I don't think we have any use of force. I do not. No. Um, so, um, what I'd like to do is uh, enter into a. Or ask, entertain a motion to enter into executive session uh, to be able to discuss the complaints and review our officers, um, you know, for each of those complaints. And so, um, could I have a motion to enter into executive session to discuss those? Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Do I have a second? Thank you, Commissioner Mapes. All in favor? Aye. All right, we're going to uh, uh, ask for a motion to enter back into regular session. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Commissioner Mapes. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Bowden. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, so we've got a couple of motions coming out uh, of executive session related to uh, some complaints that we received uh, over the summer. Um, we had two that were referrals from the Attorney General's office, which are uh, complaints that we have in our numbering system, number six and 11. And so um, for those complaints, um, we really are just notifying that we've received those, we've reviewed those, and um, we don't have any further need to do anything with those unless the Attorney General's office reaches out for more information. Uh, but that is really the extent of what uh, we need to do with those. Um, we do have complaint number seven, and so uh, I think we have a motion for number seven. Well, I'm actually going to make a motion for number seven, eight, nine, and ten. Uh, number seven, uh, we found the complaint unfounded. Number eight, we found the complaint unfounded, but the officer involved fell short of our procedural justice goals and has been counseled. Number nine, 
uh, um, we exonerated the actions of the officer. However, uh, we found the officer involved fell short of our procedural justice goals, and he has been counseled. And number 10, we exonerated the actions of the officer and found it all improper. But uh, we do want to note that uh, given the timing and circumstances surrounding the incident, we certainly understand why the individual involved took offense with some of the questioning. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a second on that motion? Thank you, Commissioner Mays. Um, all in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Okay, so that wraps up our agenda um, for tonight. Um, I would thank you all for coming and I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Commissioner Jordan. Do I have a second? Thank you, Commissioner Davis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you all very much. All right.